On an Alaskan cruise for their anniversary in 2006, a pair of well-known local business owners and philanthropists met a 19-year-old with a big future vision to become the world's greatest Iditarod musher. As Dallas Seavey would later tell the Kellers, you bet on the right horse. He recently secured himself a spot on the top of the list of all-time greats. Our Cody Krupp has the story. When people ask him about branding and marketing and promoting the Iditarod, he says, called Mr. Keller. If you look closely at all these videos and photos, you might recognize a familiar Northeast Wisconsin logo. J.J. Keller coats, J.J. Keller hats, J.J. Keller dog coats, J.J. Keller sled, J.J. Keller pickup truck. My job at the finish line is to make sure the hat's straight so you can see the title. <laughs> How many pieces of clothing that say J.J. Keller, including your dogs, <laughs> you own or that are sitting in your drawers at home, if you had to guess. <laughs> I, I don't even know. It would be a very high number. It is a very unique, about a decade and a half long partnership with the greatest Iditarod musher to ever do it. I said, son, call me in a couple weeks when we get back from the cruise. I've got a concept. She got a yellow note and said, here we go again with another Jim Keller venture. And I figured, ah, this will be a, a one-year deal. They're interested in it. It's fun to be involved with and then move on. But... It has been so very different than that. <laughs> From the youngest to ever win it. Well, congratulations. J.J. Keller, oh, Dallas CV Racing Thank Team. Thank you for your support. History in the making. Now in 2024, Dallas CV becoming the only six-time champion. I'm just as amazed now as I was in, in 12 and 07. He should win an SP. I'll put that plug on the news. He's their Super Bowl champion. He's, he's it. He just said it a couple months ago. He said, you know, without the Kellers, we wouldn't be where we are. J.J. Keller and Associates, located just on the outskirts of Nina, is over 3,000 miles away from Nome, Alaska. That is where the finish line of the Iditarod takes place. And Jim and Roseanne Keller, they've been there many times, and it never gets old. They open it up, there's a wall of people, and then he comes in, and then they close it. Yeah. That's when it hits you. You're in that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Grandkids were sitting and watching. There's grandma. There's grandpa. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Would it be a strange feeling if you go to a finish line and they're not there now? Yeah, I mean, they're they're part of the family now, right? Because that is kind of part of what's become the tradition now, I suppose. We get there and we get to visit and hang out. We consider him almost like one of our sons. We've gone up for brothers' weddings. Our brothers. We went to two of their weddings. When their book with the title Born to Rush was published, it included 127 pages. That was our J.J. Keller team for the first race. There has been so many more stories from then until now that it probably could be a full-fledged novel. People go, wow, it's been one of those unique things that has worked out. Crazy. We truly did something that nobody's done before and being able to do that with Jim and Roseanne all the way from the beginning has been a really neat experience and it is not done being written reporting from Nina Cody Krupp Fox 11 Sports first of all congratulations man um and the and truthfully I've always thought the Iditarod was just like this fascinating event I went to Alaska pretty recent so I you know it was always on the radar I was just looking through pictures and that hat is what stood out to me I'm like JJ Keller I went yep. to Osh. I don't know how much you know about his connection with UW Oshkosh football and stuff. I'm yeah. like, wow, this town from, you know, this Nina company is uh, all over this Dallas, this, this the all time greatest I did around musher. Um, you, just that, that relationship you guys have, how, um, how, how close has it gotten over that 15 years now? I think it's probably been. Yeah, I think it's there about, I think we met in this end of the summer, probably September 06. So yeah, quite some time ago. <laughs> um i think yeah 2006 that's right um you know in in the beginning um uh, i think it was kind of interesting because jim and roseanne came on a tour that i was guiding down in seward alaska at my family's business and um you know they certainly were interested and excited about the sport but we see that quite a lot and so i guess in the beginning i was really surprised that 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 interest stayed there and jim reached out you know a month or so later and um you know, I figured, ah, this will be a, a one-year deal. They're interested in it. It's fun to be involved with and then move on. But it has been so very different than that. <laughs> you know, their enthusiasm for the sport um, just grew and grew. And their kind of, I guess, maybe interest in and care of me grew. And, you know, that was really neat to see. They were invested in the people and invested in, you know, our well-being. And I think that's turned into a great relationship. 
and I've been so thankful for their involvement over the years. And now um, I, I think of them as very close friends, you know, and that this is a journey we've kind of gone through together from when I first met Jim and Roseanne, I was, you know, had finished one Iditarod. And sure, I, I was had aspirations, but don't we all at 18 or 19 or whatever I was. Um, and so it's been cool to see this kind of develop and morph. Um, and now, obviously, with the success we've been fortunate enough to have in this sport uh, and being able to do that with Jim and Roseanne all the way from the beginning has been a really neat experience. And I was so glad to see them at the finish line this year when we you know, finally got the, the record breaking sixth win. You know, we've, we've broken some records and whatnot along the way you know, for speed, the youngest winner, things like that. But this one, I think, was very special to me and I, I think to them as well, because for the first time we we truly did something that nobody's done before you know getting that sixth win and you know when you break a speed record it's great you did it a little bit faster but of course we're supposed to evolve and build on the previous generation the previous knowledge um but this one i think was very special it was great to see them there all the way from the beginning and it was uh you know a great reunion and to answer your question directly you know they've become very close and dear friends yeah, and I remember or he made a comment that you had or that he whispered in your ear or something or you whispered to him at one I it was I think one of the first wins you bet on the right horse I think it's the <laughs> you made yeah something to that effect <laughs> yeah something along that lines um it, now as far as the the idea that do, how surprised are you that this is still a thing that like is it is it so unheard of to have something like this I guess as you know somebody who's really fascinated by it but doesn't know the ins and outs is this very rare this kind of partnership this length a uh, decade and a half now something like this yeah, i i don't know how rare that is perhaps maybe um yeah I mean, it's an intriguing sport obviously it's entrapped many of us <laughs> um you know my my family's been doing it forever and um it seems like i've been doing it forever i've been doing it for you know almost my entire life since i was five years old so you know I guess I was surprised in the beginning that Jim and Roseanne's interest stayed so strong in the beginning. But as I've grown to know them, you know, no, it doesn't seem surprising now that I know them and their involvement. Um, so it wasn't that, I guess it was at the beginning, my lack of understanding of them that made me surprised. And now that I know them, it seems how they operate, right? They're in it. They're in it for the long haul and they want to see their people, you know, succeed and do well. Um, and I'm just count myself as very fortunate to be somebody who's, you know, they've taken an interest in and we've grown, like I said, to have, to have a close relationship. So now that I, I know them better, this seems almost um, preordained. <laughs> Their involvement, that is. Yeah. And I know dogs are family too, so I'll count them in this count. But how many pieces of clothing that say JJ Keller, including your dogs, <laughs> you own or that are sitting in your drawers at home if you had to guess I, I i don't even know it would be a very high number you know we've we've tried to um you know represent their company and them well and you know cleanly they like you know jim loves having things done nicely and correctly when it comes to lettering and whatnot um so we've tried to live up to that that standard and i think that's something that's not super common in mushing you know this is oftentimes it is you know as far as the humans are concerned it's the the ratty bunny boots and car hearts gang <laughs> you, you, the dogs have the best of everything um but in you know, the past years we've tried hard to have it clean and professional and and kind of set that standard uh not just for ourselves but for the sport and that's something that's been noted and commented on for the last 10 years as we've been racing is it's a very professional looking setup. And that's something that I think Jim has helped bring to the table here is um, having that expectation. And we've done that on a different scale, the things you don't necessarily see how we you know, develop the dogs, how we train the dogs, how we care for the dogs, the vet work that goes into the dogs, that stuff is done at the highest level. But the aesthetics has always seemed somewhat peripheral and not quite as important. But um, I think Jim's you know, kind of interest and insistence on that, it helps us bring it to the next level. And I think looking and acting, you know, looking professional helps you act professional, it helps set the tone, not just for ourselves, but for the entire crew. You know, this is our level that we expect in everything. And I think it is an important lesson there is the, the aesthetics do count. They do matter. And it sets the tone for the people that we're working with, that this is what we should expect of ourselves. This is what the team deserves. And so, yeah, while we have a lot of stuff that says J.J. Keller, I think it um, it's just a clean, tight look and it, it helps set the tone.
Uh, this is kind of so. I remember the first time you guys met. Um, he said you were the you know an eighteen year old so you know very talkative you know just very personable but you know we kept talking. Have it, it, were you were surprised that Jim? I mean Jim talks more than anyone I know. You know is that like uh, have you know like wow if I met somebody who talks about as much as I do did did you guys relate like just and more more so meant do you guys feel like just that um the the personalities the professionalism but also the ability to be personable with the professionalism is something that does kind of draw you guys together? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. Um, you know, when you grow up working in tourism, that's kind of your job <laughs> is to talk about the sport and the dogs and whatever else. And, you know, I, I think what struck me was, you know, Jim's interest in it um, and really wanting to understand how things work. And I think that's what draws us together more than anything is uh, a, an innate curiosity and then also beyond that curiosity once you understand how a thing works um, how a game is played how an industry functions you want to improve it you want to understand it for the purpose of taking it the next step to see where this can go and I think that has really shown in um, you know, the JJ Keller the company that they've been able to evolve and morph as the industry has changed and continue to be a leader in that company or in that industry and um, I think that's what we're trying to do in mushing, right? We're we're not trying to be slightly better than the competition. We're trying to see where this is going to go in a hundred years, and how do we be the the people that take the sport or the industry there? And like I said, I'll keep this really short. So probably one of my last ones. But you're coming to Oshkosh in May. Um, when you did that experience, when you come here, when you get to talk to the schools, I know you've talked to the football team in the locker room. What has that been like? Seeing, I guess, more their world away from Alaska. Yeah, I mean, we I travel all over the world um, doing you know everything from corporate speaking events to, you know, and a lot of those you also are going to visit some schools and things like that. Um, and I, to speak to what I was just talking about, I guess what I what I love seeing is how things work, um, whether it is the football world, whether it is um, a myriad of different business industries that I'm completely unaware of or unfamiliar with, you know, prior to meeting Jim and Roseanne, I never had even thought about trucking and the log books and the regulations and but then you stop and think about it and well of course this exists of course there must be companies that are experts in this realm and um you know then you start to really understand it and go a step farther and all right where is this going to go with you know technology where is it going to go with whatever and and again how do you stay relevant and more importantly you know how do you drive those industries into those places so i think that's what i enjoy most about getting to travel the world that's something that mushing has allowed me to do is you see more of the world you understand more than just your little slice of it and there have been many things i've learned from different industries that we can you know skills or traits or things that they have found ways to evolve and the first question for me is okay they did this and that was successful how do we translate that to what i do what's the parallel what's the equal and opposite over here that we can develop and benefit from um and again, that's something that's been really fun with Jim. He he is a you know kind of a big picture guy and kind of looking into the future on this stuff. So that's been that's been fun. And there's definitely been some feedback coming into our world from their world. And I think that's really benefited us. So I'm looking forward to being down there in May. Um, looking forward to meeting some more interesting people, getting back in touch with some very interesting people that we've met in the past down there. So it's a great place, great part of the world, and I love the people down there. Would it be a strange feeling if you go to a finish line and they're not there now? Like, are you just so used to, you know, Jim Rosan being there? Like, you know, absolutely. To... Yeah, I mean, they're they're part of the family now, right? So when I think about crossing the finish line in Nome, it's the people that you interact with. It's the the days and the hours after that finish. Um, you know, that you're kind of reliving the the experience you just had with them. It's people that are invested and interested in the the very challenging experience you just had, and those are the people we want to share that with and we're not able to do that on the race itself um it's also fun to hear about their experiences while i've been out there racing you know people are back home and they're watching it online and they're like oh my goodness this happened and that happened and i don't know what else is happening in the race i'm in my own bubble so that's when i think about the end of the iditarod it's kind of reliving that um the previous nine days with your friends who were experiencing the same thing but in a different way and uh so yeah it'd be very strange to reach the finish line and um not have them there <laughs> Uh, because that is kind of part of what's become the tradition now. I suppose we get there and we get to visit and hang out, and we, you know, that's kind of our our annual re meet every year. So, yeah, you enjoy the the pizza and the uh, the the Alaskan style deals with the little paper on the 
Uh, you told me all about that. You enjoy, is that that's how you like to is that how you would like to do business? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean that's that's exactly exactly it. You know, and I I think that's one of the things that makes I think both Jim and I rather effective people there is you can cut to the chase on some of this, right? There's a lot of peripheral stuff that isn't important. What moves the needle? What gets the job done? And uh, you know, a lot of times if you have a meeting of minds, you know, that's the most important thing. And if you you come to an understanding and an agreement. Does it matter if the the deal's written on you know a, a ream of paper this thick or on a napkin? We came to an understanding, and I feel like Jim and I can communicate and um, understand where each other are coming from and have each other's best interest in mind, and and thus it's a great deal for for both of us that you know or a great partnership I should say, and also a, a great friendship. So yeah, I'm, I uh, very much enjoy getting to visit with them whenever we have the opportunity. Um, I'm so glad that they were a gnome this year, particularly with the sixth win. I felt like that's something that while I was the one on the dog team, there's a lot of people that are invested in that team's success and our success. So, yeah, my name is on the on the trophy, I guess. But um, I feel like we are the representative of a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, both human and canine. Um, I've got a big team here, which um, that's helping me train and develop dogs at all different levels, whether it's training the puppies that are, you know, just learning to run in a harness or helping to care for the retirees that were part of my winning teams in past years. Um, they're all part of the team. They're all part of the kennel success. And Jim and Roseanne are the same thing. They're part of the team. They're part of the su success. So I feel very fortunate to be the one that gets to coach and manage that team. But we have to always remember, you know, we're, again, the representative of so much effort. And that's where I feel like you know, getting to share that with all of them, everybody who has, you know, put time and effort and energy into our success. Um, or when I say our success, I mean, theirs by, and it's, it's a team effort, right? So getting to share that with all of them is always very special. Well, last for me, you've done youngest, you've done every youngest thing you could do. You're the first with six. I know if he's, uh, Jim had mentioned four in a row is the only thing that ha you haven't done, but what, you know, you're 36, I believe, 36, right? I just turned 37 actually during this last year's race. Oh, so yeah. still getting used to that. <laughs> I, well, I'd be curious about how you do your birthday, but uh, I know I'm going to interrupt. But um, as far as your goals for the future, you're 36. I know your dad's obviously older uh, and he's trying to get maybe going back in. Like, what is your goal for now? Do you have one? Like, um, are you just going to ride? Mean, ever since I became the youngest I did a champion, which was very much a goal, right? We were striving and driving for that one. Um, but as soon as I won that first one, I think I was still in the finish shoot. Maybe it was an hour after it's all a blur now that, you know, um, somebody was asking me, you know, when are you going to get number five? Cause five had been elusive. One person had accomplished it and five, many people had reached four, but hadn't been able to get that magic number five. Um, so right then I was being asked, you know, when are you going to get five and being kind of, a little bit of a smart aleck, I guess. My my response was, well, I'm pretty sure two comes next, you know. And that's kind of been the mentality, though, is um, we'll win the next one. You know, focus on the next one. And if you do that, you know, and break that down, what's the next best step we do right now? What? How do I advance this team down the trail, the next 10 feet over this mountain range, through this, you know, hazardous section of trail, whatever it is, you do each of those small steps well. And then in the end, good things happen you won the race or you've had a successful race. Maybe you don't, you don't win them all. Sometimes you do the best you can. You run the team to the best of their ability. The dogs do the best they can. And you just had a little bit of bad luck or somebody else had a better team. That's sometimes just happens. Uh, but you do that enough times. You do that through a career and pretty soon you're where we are now. And you look back and say, Holy cow, we've got six of these things. So, um, it's been working. Why change it? I think we're going to keep doing the same thing. And, uh, you know, when whenever we hang up our dog booties, whether that's you know five years or fifty years, uh, we hope to look back at a great career and maybe it'll be ten wins. Who knows? But we're gonna focus on the next one. And if we run the Iditarod next year, we'll try to do it to the best of our ability each and every day. And maybe it results in a win. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> and we have an intruder. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll be that'll be it for me. I appreciate you, man, very much.